Hi guys, Darth Dudes here, back with another video and continuing on with my top 10s for 2020. I am doing my top 10 McFarlane Toys figures uh, for 2020. And if someone had told me a year or two years ago that I would own as many McFarlane Toys figures as I do now and as bought in as many as I did in 2020, I wouldn't have believed you. But with McFarlane getting the license for DC figures and some other things that I actually wanted figures from, uh, there's a lot of things I wanted to get. And uh, the line has been honestly pretty damn good for the most part. I feel like McFarlane Toys gets a lot of hate and... Uh, yeah, not every figure is going to be good. Uh, the first wave was kind of mediocre for the multiverse stuff. Um, but I think they've gotten better and better. We've got a lot of really solid releases. If you've been on the fence about some of McFarlane's stuff, I would honestly uh, give some of them a try um, before passing judgment. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. Um, they're not, a lot of them, I'd say most of them are not statues. None of them are perfect by any means, but uh, the DC uh, multiverse stuff, for sure has been really cool of course there has been a lot of batman i'm hoping that uh he branches out into more characters soon um i haven't had much issue with the batman stuff because uh i really bat like batman it's like one of my favorite superheroes and i like different versions of him so uh it hasn't bothered me quite as much but i understand the criticism there for sure um yeah we're gonna do top 10 uh mcfarlane figures just in general instead of doing a top 10 dc multiverse which i could have easily done um, but there are some figures from other properties that he's made that don't have enough figures to make top tens, like the Mortal Kombat line. Uh, we got Warhammer figures and there's only like, for some of these, there's only like a couple figures for the franchises so far. Um, but I think a lot of these figures that I have are some of my favorites from this year and they deserve to be talked about a little bit. But in front of you here is not the top 10. These are my runner ups, which I believe happens to be 10 figures. So if this was a top 20, these guys would be the back 10 in no particular order because I like them all pretty much the same. Um, but we got a lot of stuff here. We've got uh, mostly multiverse, but we got some uh, Mortal Kombat. So uh, in the back there, you can't really see because Superman's in the way, but I've got the Mortal Kombat Bar Baraka and the Katana. Baraka is pretty cool. I was expecting to like him, but I actually really like that Katana figure. I'm not a huge fan of the character. Like she's cool and all that, but I'm not like. It's not a character I play a lot in the game or whatever, but the figure turned out actually really well. I really like that one. Um, then the multiverse figures, you know, the Superman's are really good. It's probably in the fit. My, I don't have a ton of Superman figures. This is probably my favorite Superman I own. Uh, if this was, and this is just my list of what I like, what more my personal top 10, this isn't an objective list at all. So yours is definitely going to be different. Uh, if this is objective, this guy would definitely be on the list because he's really good. Probably one of McFarlane's best this year. Um, we got the Dark Knights Metal, um, Bat Evil Batman, which were some of my favorite to pick up this year. And I didn't want to fill, the, could easily fill the list with all of them, but I didn't want to do that. So I put most of them here in the honorable mentions. We got the Murder Machine back there, which is great. The Devastator is awesome. It was really, I wanted to add him on my top 10, but he just didn't quite make it, uh, mainly because he's just too small. Um, he should have been a, probably a build a figure, if I'm being honest, but. You get a lot of figure for like 25 bucks. So that's a really good figure. Um, I love the Dawnbreaker as well. He's awesome. Um, the White Knight Batman's another really solid Batman. I really like the storyline and the art style. And I think that McFarlane kind of uh, got the art style down in plastic really well. Uh, the two pack there with the Flash and Red Death, I actually just got today, which I really like. But that Flash isn't as good as the single release one because he doesn't have the effect parts. And I don't like the head sculpt quite as much. And Red Death doesn't have quite the articulation I'd like him to have, but he looks really amazing. And then in the back there, we have the uh, Azrael and the Batman armor, which is a really great figure. Again, one I was really tempted to put on the top 10, but its articulation is just good. It's not like anything amazing. Um, I think he should have still had the uh, Came with the Flame piece for the sword, um, but otherwise it's a really great figure, again, from the Curse of the White Knight stuff. But yeah, these are my runner-ups. So now let's get on to the actual top 10. So at number 10, we have the Warhammer 40k Necron Warrior figure. I don't have a huge attachment to Warhammer 40k. I played a little bit of the games. I've read up on a little bit of the lore, but there's a lot to Warhammer 40k. You don't truly realize that until you start trying to research. Um, so I'm very much a novice when it comes to this stuff. I don't know a whole lot about these things. But what I do know is they make cool action figures or make for cool action figures. And Necron Warrior, I like a lot more than I was expecting to. 
Uh, the sculpt and the paint, like McFarlane, is amazing. There's a wash all throughout the figure. Uh, tons of crazy, like, battle damage and scarring and whatnot, all these wires. The design of the character itself is really cool. Um, articulation surprisingly quite good. And he comes with some cool accessories with the little scarab drone and this really big um, Goss Flare, which is awesome. Um, and the fact that I do have him on the stand right now, but you can actually get him holding the gun in, an, in a shooting pose and not have him on the stand. And his feet are big enough and the articulation is good enough where you can actually have him without a stand still standing holding the gun, which is pretty good that the engineering and articulation allows for that because this is a large and not very light accessory. But yeah, that is number 10. And at number nine, we have the Dark Knight's Metal Grim Knight. And this is just a cool figure, cool concept, although a bit, I guess, simplistic. But it's Batman who uses guns and kills people. He's basically the Punisher wearing a Batman suit, and I think that's really cool. Um, maybe not the most original idea, but I think it's awesome. And I love the design uh, for this figure. And uh, I think it looks really good and was done pretty well. Articulation is pretty decent. Um, sculpt and paint is definitely there. I love all the straps and different weapons he has on him. I like that he comes with some cool guns. He's got the submachine gun and the grenade launcher. I do wish he had more guns. Like these were actually removal guns that would have been cool, but I understand why they didn't do that. Um, but I would have liked to see like if these handguns on the torso and whatnot were removable and he had like a removable combat knife. I think that would be cool. Not a big deal. Um, head sculpts also one of the better Batman sculpts, um, that we've seen. It's not perfect, but, uh, Looks really cool. I really like this one a lot. Um, I thought this would actually be higher on my list, but there were just so many good figures that came out that he's only my number nine, but he's still really awesome. Next up at number eight, we have a Mortal Kombat 11 figure, and it is the Raiden, or a Dark Raiden, I guess. This is the evil form. Um, and yeah, uh, when the Mortal Kombat line started for McFarlane, one of the figures I wanted the most for him to make was a Raiden. And they did it, and uh, it's really good. Again, it's beautifully sculpted and painted. Articulation's pretty good. Um, accessories are great. He has his staff, a couple of interchangeable hands, and two of these lightning effects, which I absolutely love how these look. I think they look awesome. Uh, the figure itself looks great. Articulates really good. It's just a really solid figure. And at number seven, we have the Space Marine figure that they made this year. It has a much longer name. It's like Ultramarine Primaris Intercessor, Assault Intercessor or something like that. Um, again, I don't know much of the lore behind it, but I've wanted a Space Marine figure for a long time, even before I even decided to look into some of the lore for this stuff. Um, Bandai did a figure that's way too expensive. This one is really good for the price. Again, for like 20, 25 bucks. You're getting quite a bit of plastic. This guy has a decent amount of heft to him. He's got pretty good articulation considering how bulky the armor is. I thought he was going to be kind of a statue per McFarlane stuff, but it's actually fairly well articulated. Has good accessories, and the paint where it's actually applied is also pretty well done. Although when it does come to paint, I feel like he is a little on the plain side. It would have been nice to get a wash on him. Um, but regardless, it's a really good figure, and a lot of people who have been wanting a Space Marine figure finally got one, and I hope we get a lot more different versions of it, which would be really cool. And at number six, we have a figure from the Doom Eternal stuff, and it is the Doom Marauder. I have the Doom Slayer from that game, and aside from the Marauder, the only other figures they've done has just been variations of that Slayer, either by just repaints or some slight remolds. Unfortunately, that Slayer figure is not that good. I still don't hate it, but uh, I, there definitely could be... would be nice to get a better Slayer figure. But this figure does everything right, where the Slayer does barely any of it right. This thing is really good. Now, I wasn't expecting this figure to be that good. Um, but you have beautiful sculpt and paint. Like, the paint and sculpt on this guy is amazing. On the armor and whatever, it looks like... Almost looks like real metal and whatnot. It's that good. You got dirt around the boots and everything. Um, but he does not just have good sculpt. He also has pretty great articulation. I have him kind of as a basic pose here. But you can actually move the arms in. You can get two-handed poses on his axe. Uh, you can get him in action poses. You can get him in so many different poses where the Slayer was almost a brick. Not quite, but almost a brick. This thing is so much better in that regard. My only real complaint with this figure is I think he should have came with more accessories. He does come with the iconic axe that he has. But he also uses a shotgun in the game as well. And they even gave this figure trigger 
finger hands and he can hold the Slayer super shotgun like he was meant to hold a shotgun. So I think they should have included that. But outside of that, this one's a really awesome one. I think this is going to be one of the most underrated figures of 2020. Um, this thing's really good. Probably one of the best things that came out, honestly. It's very good. And now we get down to the top five, with number five being the Curse of the White Knight Azrael, where the Azrael Batman armor one didn't make it in. The standard Azrael does. This figure is really good, which I'm saying a lot, but it's true because there's been a lot of great figures from McFarlane. I'd say this is definitely... If I was take an objective look at everything they released, probably one of their best releases this year. Um, this figure got me to read the comic book because I liked it that much. And it just looks amazing. The red and the gold look really good together, and it really pops out on the shelf from a sea of a lot of black and gray. Um, excellent articulation on a McFarlane figure, especially considering how bulky he is and how he can still move very well is pretty good. A uh, great accessory with the sword with the flame effect looks amazing. Uh, I have him with the assault rail there. I didn't come with him. Um, which I think it would have been cool if they included that, but that's okay. Uh, these little cape things, they, they engineered these pretty well with these being sturdy, solid pieces and having the soft, um, pliable plastic on these parts. I think that's just really cool. Um, this is a pit in the home run figure for McFarlane. Really good one. And at number four, we have the first bath that McFarlane has done in the DC Multiverse line, not including that Batmobile. It is the Merciless from the Dark Knight's Metal. And probably one of my favorite out of that crew, the Dark Knight's Metal crew. Um, this figure is amazing. Uh, it's just awesome. The God of War mixed with Batman is just super cool. I love the uh, Ares-style armor, but with some subtle uh, changes to... Um, Make it look a little more Batman, like with the bat wings on the helmet. It looks amazing. I love how the eyes are painted to make it look like they're glowing. you got silver brushing all throughout. The blue looks really good. Um, I like how the skull looks kind of spawny on the, on the uh, uh, belt thing or whatever. Um, decently articulated for how big he is. Um, definitely not the most articulated figure in the line, but you can still get decent poses. I got him in a decent enough little action pose there. I love the sword. Just a super awesome figure. And pretty big too. Unfortunately, he's bigger than Devastator, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I think this guy should have been a single release and a bit smaller and then made the uh, Devastator a bath. But regardless, really cool figure. And at number three, we have a figure I recently got. It is the Red Hood, which was first in a two-pack with the new 52 Nightwing. And then he got a single release. I got the single release. I didn't care super much about that Nightwing. Um, but yeah, this is a... Really good figure. Another one of McFarlane's best from this year, in my opinion. Uh, we've gotten a decent amount of Red Hood figures before. I think this one's one of the best. Um, for me personally, I have the Haya Toys uh, Injustice 3 and 3 quarter inch one, and I have the Mattel one from a year or so back. Um, both are pretty good to just to be decent, but this one takes the cake. It's just awesome. He looks great. The proportions look good. The sculpt and uh, what paint is there looks amazing on him. I love the helmet. I like that they actually painted the black lines on the helmet. I love the metallic candy red. looks amazing. The white is super clean for the eyes because it's a separate piece. Um, I like the jacket and the bat symbol that's raised from the rest of the torso armor. He has guns that can actually be removed from the holsters and held in the hands, which is always good. And the articulations, again, one of the best for the line, making him one of the most solid figures from McFarlane this year. And if you're looking for a Red Hood, probably the one you should be hunting down. At number two, this is my favorite DC Multiverse figure from this year, and it's a character I've wanted in figure form for a long time. It is the Flashpoint Thomas Wayne Batman. I, again, I think McFarlane Toys just uh, hit this one out of the park. It's really good. Um... Proportionally, I think the proportions are some of the best we've seen on a Batman figure from Multiverse so far. I love the cape and the little uh, spiky things that kind of look spawny, which is really cool. He's got the uh, really good head sculpt, honestly. I'm a really big fan of the head sculpt. When I first saw pictures of it, I wasn't sure how I was going to like it, but I really like it a lot. He has his handguns, which can be stored in the holsters. The red looks good. The bat symbol on there looks really nice. The articulation's really nice as well. Um, yeah, this is the figure I've wanted for years now. Flashpoint is one of my favorite, uh, animated films. And that version of Batman is one of my favorite alternate versions of Batman. It probably is my favorite alternate version of Batman. 
So I wanted to figure it for a long time and we finally got it and it's awesome. I wasn't sure I was gonna get this figure this year, but I got lucky and found it in store, which was crazy. So yeah, Flashpoint Batman. And at number one for my top 10 McFarlane Toys figures this year, this is probably not much of a surprise. It is the Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. This one is the sword version, but you could count any version of it. Um, I didn't get the, uh, I did back the Kickstarter one, um, but those have only just started uh, coming out. So I'm probably gonna count that as a 2021 release because I think barely anyone got it in 2020. Um, so I haven't got that one yet. So I wasn't sure if that one was gonna beat it out yet, but now it doesn't matter because I don't even have it to compare. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this is just really good figures. The spawn a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. It looks amazing. Paint sculpt is on par. It's really good. Articulation is really awesome. He's not missing too much aside from maybe a swivel cut at the thigh. Um, accessory is good. Obviously, would like to see more accessories like maybe interchangeable hands, some guns, or other melee weapons. Instead of just having one melee weapon for a few different releases, making the variants, but still fine. Um, yeah, it's just a really, really good figure, um, 100%. Uh, I think most people agree on that one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Putting Spawn there at the side. I'm just taking a little overview. That is my top 10 McFarlane Toys figures for 2020. It's been a really good year for McFarlane Toys, I'm not going to lie to you. I think some people give the company a lot of shit. Um and some of it is rightly deserved, do not get me wrong, but they've also put out a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff, and you'd be foolish to completely deny that. There's been some amazing figures this year, a lot of figures that have been honestly my favorite from this year. I never thought I'd say that about McFarlane Toys figures, so really awesome. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Of course, this is just my list. You guys are going to have your different favorites, so let me know what your favorite McFarlane Toys figures are if you picked any up. Um, I'd love to hear what you liked. Uh, hope you guys like this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And the next video is probably going to be top 10 overall figures of 2020. I don't think I have any more lists to do aside from that. So keep your eyes out for that one. Again, thanks for watching. See you all in the next one.